timer one, both which we did recording. Yes, sir. Both. Uh, both we have learned how to configure it using a 16-bit timer. The next thing is, let us take one example of an 8-bit timer, which is timer two. So this is actually the block diagram for timer two. So as you can see, this block diagram for timer two is slightly different from the block diagrams of timer one and timer zero. Here, how this this timer work is that you have to actually <coughs> This is the timer 2 register, it is uh, similar to timer 0 low, timer 0 high kind of thing. Okay? This is the timer 2 uh, register. This is where we will actually will count up. Same, same concept like the timer 0 low and timer 1 low, timer 1 high. All this is why we have used both, right? Timers one, uh, timer 0 low and timer 0 high. Because we use it as 16 bit. If you configure timer 0 as 8 bit, we will only use timer 0 low, right? So this timer 2 is same like that. It will start to count from 0 and on, until it goes to the maximum. And when it reaches the FF, it will actually overflow, right? The overflow will actually give some output. So the timer 2 is counting up and comparing with PR2. There is another register here is PR2 in every clock cycle. So inside this PR2 is what is where you have to load the number of count. So this concept is slightly different from what we have done before. Earlier we actually uh, used the formula to find out how many number of counts that we want. And then what we do, we minus the number of count because let's say we need 35,000 uh, cycles to achieve a particular delay. What we do, we minus from 65,535 so that we can get the value that we want to load inside so that it will count up to the maximum and it will, it will overflow. So we do something like that. But here, what we are going to do is, we are going to put the value here, the equivalent number of count. That means earlier example, let's say you get 35,000 count means, you will load it here. This one will keep increasing and will keep comparing. Of course, you cannot do 35,000 because 8 bits can only go up to 255, that's the maximum one. So whatever number of count, you actually use this formula to find out. This is actually the same formula like the previous one, only thing I've actually rearranged it in such a way you can straight away uh, apply this formula. So, you find out what is, how many number of count cycle that you need, you load it inside here. What timer 2 will do is it keep increasing and it will keep comparing. The moment that these two are actually same, the equal signal will reset timer 2. The moment it's same, it will actually reset. So a post scale is applied to the equal signal to generate the timer 2 interrupt. So of course, this will actually set the interrupt. So that means when you load the number of count value here, this one will keep increasing. Once it's seen, it will send the equal signal. This timer 2 will reset and it becomes 0 back. And here the flag, flag signal will be turned on. So here, uh, for this timer calculation, we have two things. <coughs> one you see, one you have the pre-scaler, another one you have post-scaler. So in your formula, in your formula you have, if you see this formula, is usually the earlier formula is we have uh, 1 over frequency oscillation times 4 times pre-scalar times the number of count equals to desired delay. Now I have actually shifted the other way around. So that's how you get number of count equals to the desired delay. Because you can see here the frequency oscillation because you are actually manipulating the, form, uh, the formula. And then you have divide with pre-scalar and divide with post-scalar. If you see before this, it will be multiplying and multiplying. So here you come divide. And here you have plus 1, minus 1. This whole thing, you calculate an answer first, you minus 1. Why minus 1? Why do you want to minus 1? Because timer 2 starts to run from 0. That's why you minus 1. Okay. 
So it is a simple thing for timer 2. For eight bit uh, timers have this principle. The content of PR2 is actually the number of counts required to achieve the desired delay. It is same like that uh, previously. You can understand or not? So how do you find the number of counts? It's the same formula. Just say to shuffling back. So the content of PR2 is equal to desired delay on some form minus 1. So that is the formula. So it's very, very simple. So how do you actually configure this? It's by configuring the two-count register. Now if you see the two-count register is quite simple in the sense that it consists of a post scale timer on and also pre scale. That's all. So it consists of uh, post scale timer on and also pre scale. So it makes it very easy to configure. This one is actually non care. So you can leave it as zero. Any question after this point? Yes. So just now you say it's minus one because it starts from zero. Yes, we are to start counting from zero. Let's say if you, you get some value, la, the number of count you get is 200. That should be the number of counts that you require. Yeah. If your timer 2 is start to count from 0, you should minus 1. Oh. Understand? Then only it will count for 200 cycles. Any other question? So let's see an example. This, is this question, this example came for final last semester. You expect in this semester, right? Anyway, the same thing with timer is that it has the same structure. So let's see here. Assume that our, our PIC 18 is running with a 32 megahertz crystal oscillator. Which timer uses 32 kilohertz? Uh, timer 1. Timer 1. So 32 megahertz crystal oscillator, write an instruction sequence to generate periodic interrupts every 8 millisecond with high priority using timer 2. <coughs> so this part is actually you are writing, two, you are doing two things, right? What are, what are two things you are doing? You are configuring the timer to count every, what is the required delay or the required time? 8 millisecond. So you need to configure the timer. For that, to configure, you need to use this formula. And based on this formula, you get the value, you can load into PR2 and then you need to configure the two part. That is configuring the timer. Now here they also have asked to do the interrupt. So you must also configure the interrupt. So configuring the interrupt for timer 2 is very, very important. So let's see the first part. Let's go back. So now we need to find out what is the value that you want to load inside PR2. <coughs> what is the desired delay? You need this is 8 millisecond. What is the frequency oscillation? 32 megahertz. Pre scalar and post scalar you have to choose. So what is the options that you have? You only have option until 16. So for the post scale, post scale means after. Post scale you have 1, 2, 3, 4 until 1, 1, 1, 1. This you have 16 combinations. For pre scale you also have until 16, but you only have 1, 4, and 16. You don't have this much of choice for the post scale. So here is trial and error. So try which one? Yes? <coughs> one next one, another one is don't okay. care. Let's see what is this 1x. The 1x is actually. So, which uh, scale you want to use? Which post scale you want to use? 16. 16. Both. Both. Okay, so that's So, you get 16, 16. What's the answer that you get? 2 pi. 2 50. 2 pi.
But I prefer that you do one by one so that you don't miss out. It's all the same thing. C is 0. C is 12 for I want, not 0, 0. So you enable the GIE. Any other question? Any question? Please go to another chapter. It's only human, sir. Just before we wrap up this timer thing, you can reflect back on your test too. I did mention several times that in timer, there's only two things you need to be very aware of. One is the usage of timer as a delay, it's a subroutine delay. We have already seen the program, I already told you, if you're going to use it, it is the same structure. It is the same structure. It's a, it's a delay name and return, a delay name, whatever name you want to give. Plan. And then you have to configure the timer and put <coughs> the value and then wait for the flag to get one. And once the flag is one, you're out. Or if you want to do a multiplication of that delay, you just include like a, another file register which multiplies, that means another loop. It has the same structure. If you use it as a delay, that is how you use the timer. Because you are not using it as intra, you are just using it as a delay. So what you supposed to do in your test 2, right? I have not checked your test 2 yet. Can I check it along? It's level. I am just telling you. Another one is using timer as intra. That means, yes, you are configuring the timer to interrupt every particular duration, let's say one second. But at the end of the one second, it generates the interrupt. It is not used as simply as a delay. It is used to do something every, I mean, it is, it is used to do something period, periodically. And how do you assign the task to do something periodically? By using interrupt. Earlier, the timer delay is just as a delay only. It is not supposed to do anything. It is just waste time. I'm just using the word waste time, huh? So that because you don't understand the word delay means waste time. Because you understand waste much more better than delay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I waste time a lot. <laughs> so it is just used to delay time. Just for example, you want to turn on LEDs for 0.5 seconds. That's what your your test tool is about, right? So you just want to not do anything for the 0.5 seconds. So you're going to use that subroutine timer to just count. 4.5 seconds. That's all. End of story. After you finish, you return back. That is the usage of timer as a delay. If you're going to use it as interrupt, yes, you need to, of course, do the calculation. For the earlier time also, you did the calculation. But this time, you you did something which is enable its interrupt. Now, we have already uh, did a lot of examples. You also can see the examples in uh, chapter 6. Remember, I told you the last two examples. The first one is using interrupt zero, the second one is using timer interrupt. So practice on that. Only thing is actually we are practicing only thing. Have you all tried uh, passing papers? Have you tried yet? When you want to try, next week. Next week. Friend of two people. After my group test, you can try. Because there's two paper this Sunday. Remember, uh, my group test falls on which day? 13, 13. <laughs> it's a Sunday, you know, it's a Saturday, right? Saturday. Anyways, next day after the Friday. <laughs> 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 if you want to believe those in numerology, you believe that. It's even more on Sunday. 13, 13.